What up, Interverse? Josh here from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man. And today we're here to talk about the monomyth, also known as the hero's journey. Now, before we get into the details, let me just give you a premise as to why I decided to do this video. So many people go throughout daily life not realizing the major influence that the monomyth has on society, on culture, all throughout our history, it has had a major influence over the way humankind does things, the way we learn stories, the way we're initiated into um, different traditions. And so today what I want to do is just give a brief overview and shed some light onto a couple, onto three main areas. One, where did the monomyth come from? What's the history behind it? Two, what is the monomyth comprised of? What are kind of the key components? And then three, how can the monomyth be used in everyday life? And then in later videos and future series, what I plan on doing is breaking each of those down and going into some advanced videos about archetypes and, and um, different different aspects of the monomyth. But now that you have an understanding of what we're going to talk about, let's just get right into point number one, which is what is the monomyth? Well, first, let's just analyze the, 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 the Greek root words. Mono, meaning one, and myth, meaning story. So the connotation is the one story. And essentially, what several professors have kind of studied over the years and, and brought to light is that throughout history there has been one story, the hero's journey, that has been told throughout humankind. I mean if we look back at ancient texts like the epic story of Giglamesh way back from uh, the ancient Sumerians where Giglamesh and his, his buddy Enkidu travel across the sea, go into the god's territory, and end up finding the, the, like the secret to longevity, right? The, all those stories, the Bible, um, Arabian Nights, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. All of those stories, including fairy tales, a lot of the ones that you've seen um, that have been popularized by Disney, and, and whatnot, they all are dripping with all kinds of elements of the monomyth. Now the term hero's journey and monomyth itself was popularized about, I don't know, 40 or 50 years ago by the late um, Joseph Campbell. He was a professor of literature, he primarily focused on mythology and stories from the ancient past. And what happened is he, after so much study, he found that there was essentially this like one template and there were certain beats that almost every one of these stories that has lasted the test of time, um, almost they all had these, these similarities. And so what he did was he wrote a book called A Hero of a Thousand Faces, which is also known as The Hero's Journey. And in it, he details the 18 or so different distinct steps of the hero's journey. Now, Joseph Campbell isn't the only one who's written about it. There have been several people who have written about it before and since. But um, he's the one who kind of popularized the idea and, and really gave some good academic research, stuff that's, uh, he, you know, based on Freud and Jung's uh, psychoanalytics. But that's essentially where it comes from. So that's the history of the monomyth in a nutshell. Now let's talk about what are the things that comprise the monomyth. Well, first, let's look at some examples so that you guys can get an idea of, you know, what is the monomyth? Because the previous ones that I gave were kind of 
old school. They were, you know, maybe not everybody's familiar with that, but most people know movies or stories like Star Wars, Harry Potter, Hunger Games, Lord of the Rings. All of those stories follow this template almost to a T. Now there are variations, but the interesting thing is once we start to study this, you you'll identify that even though the stories are wildly different, they they have different genres, their characters are wildly different, they all follow a very similar path. And that path, that template is called the monomyth. Now, if we were to sum it up, we would say that the hero's journey is comprised of three main parts. You have the normal world, which is where the hero starts out. Then you have separation, where the hero leaves the normal world in order to go on his adventure. Then you have initiation, so separation, normal world and separation are kind of one, right? Then two is separation, I'm sorry, initiation, where the hero goes on the road of trials and he's confronted by several challenges and obstacles and events that strengthen him, that strengthen his resolve, that teach him lessons. And in the end, what happens is he receives what's called the ultimate boon, which is essentially the, the main source of power or, um, or the main lesson. So we'll, we'll go into detail about this in later videos, but just imagine like Prometheus stealing fire from the gods. That fire was the ultimate boon. He, he brought it back to man and it, and it opened our world to a whole new um, level of insight. Then the third phase, so you have, you have separation, initiation, and the third phase is the return to the normal world. And in the return, what happens is the hero brings the boon back, brings the lesson back, brings the power back to the real world where he came from or she came from in order to share it with mankind. Normally, that boon in the story is something that mankind has desperately needed but has forgotten or lost. And so, in a nutshell, that's how the hero's journey goes. And then the only other thing of note is that each of the characters in a hero's journey have very distinct, they follow very distinct archetypes. And if you guys aren't familiar with that, I think I already have a video on that, but I'm going to go into great detail about each of the archetypes during this series, and we'll talk about some very advanced stuff. But just to give you an idea of what an archetype is, just imagine um, the mentor, which would be like Yoda or Gandalf the Grey. They would serve as the mentor, the old wise man. Um, you also have the hero, which is, of course, the main person in the journey. So Harry Potter, Luke Skywalker, people like that. Um, Katniss Everdeen. And then, so you have archetypes, the, the, the antagonist or the villain, whatever you want to call them. You, they're all there. So the story is essentially a three-act structure that is broken down into roughly, and this depends on which scholar you look at, 18 different distinct steps or beats, and then also the characters within it uh, normally follow some, some sort of archetype. And the reason behind that, again, is there are, there are things in our subconscious that are affect our psyche and that we easily identify with when those, those beats and those archetypes are introduced into a story. We immediately, on a very deep level, on a, on a symbolic level, understand them um, to a degree that creates like an instant recognition for the audience and the storyteller. So that's point number two, what, what the whole monomyth is comprised of in a very, very, that's a compact nutshell. There's a whole bunch more to that. Now, the third thing is, what is the monomyth useful for? And first, I want to talk about, pardon me, my nose is itchy. First, I want to talk about the main use of the monomyth. And then I want to go and branch out into maybe some 
some more radical ideas about what the monomyth can be used for. But first and foremost, if you haven't thought about it already, the monomyth is a great tool to use if you are a writer or a storyteller of any sort. And so when I say that, I'm being very liberal. Anybody who maybe tells story to their kids at night, anybody who obviously writes um, novels or short stories, this could also apply to someone who is a songwriter. This could apply to someone who does poetry. And I think, especially, and this is one of the topics I'm going to talk about in another video, this is going to be a huge shift for the video game industry. It's going to push the video game industry into the next level of storytelling. But again, that's for another, another day. So storytelling, that it has a huge use there. The second part would be for people who give speeches because the best speakers use story in order to relate their, their lessons, their knowledge, and things like that. And the monomyth is one of the best methods to, to tell a story. It's one of the most effective tools to use to tell a story because when you look at each of the beats, when you look at the archetypes, people easily and readily identify with them. So you don't have to be, you don't have to overthink anything. You don't have to be overly creative. If I say a wizard like Merlin was the mentor, like it immediately clicks in your mind what that character is, what it is. If I tell you that uh, you know, there was there was a gate that was being blocked by two huge ogres. You may not know that those ogres represent threshold guardians, but your psyche immediately identifies with these people are trying to prevent someone from crossing through that gate. And so that's what I mean by for people who tell stories, it's a great it's a great use. Now, I'm not suggesting that someone use the 18 steps in their story because sometimes you can only give a five minute speech. But what I'm saying is for the parts of your speech, if you're going to introduce a character, if you're going to introduce a situation, introduce one that's that's one of those beats or one of those archetypes from the monomyth and it's going to be so much easier to relate to your audience. Now those are those are some of the more what I would consider conventional uses of the monomyth. Now what I found is that the monomyth has some other more what I would consider radical uses which is it's a great way to evaluate your life. And I know that sounds kind of crazy but if you look at your life as a story and you try to identify those things that have happened to you that are very similar to a story, a time where you've faced a great challenge, a time where you've had to leave your normal world and go somewhere. Uh, a perfect example that I can relate to is many young men and women who are who who decide to join the military, they were in their normal world and then they they were they accepted the call to adventure and they were pulled or pushed or whatever you want to say into this extremely different world, the special world, where they learned new skills, they were faced by new obstacles and challenges, and whether they served for two years or 20 years, when they come back into the normal world, they're changed forever. Their lives are changed, their perspectives are changed, and they've brought back lessons that can be used not only in their own lives, but can be shared with other people. And so, to me, I feel like that is the ultimate um, benefit of the hero's journey, is that it's a tool that allows us to self-realize and self-recognize, meaning recognize our faults, recognize the lessons that we've already learned, rec recognize our strengths and our weaknesses so that we can constantly try to do better. And the other thing I would say is that 
for someone who wants to better themselves, for someone who wants to go out and do more in the world, whatever their their dream or 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 idea might be, if you follow the monomyth almost as a guide and say, this is the challenge I want to face, this is the adventure I'm going to set on, and I'm going to accept the call to adventure, you will assuredly face almost all of the different beats that go along the monomyth. And, but in the end, it makes you stronger. So it's a good methodology to look at how you go about new challenges, learning new things, doing new, testing new ideas, all of that. So anyways, that, that all of that is just a, a very small taste of what the monomyth has to offer. And I truly believe there's more. I don't think I've really articulated everything. But for the sake of time, since we're at 15 minutes, I'm going to cut it off here. And I'm going to say if you're interested in this, if you want to hear more about it, then please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like. And what's going to happen is as I create more videos on this topic, they're going to come to you right away. You're going to be notified. It'll pop up in your YouTube. And you'll be able to follow me down this adventure. So if you're up for it, accept this call to adventure. And I promise you, you will not be disappointed with all the fun that we have. Okay, until next time, take it easy.